What's up, guys? The Naraka raid boss is coming. This is one of the most important raid bosses for your mid-game progression. The global servers Asia, Japan, and EU are getting this new boss soon, and I'm going to show you how to defeat it. I'm going to be walking you through what monsters to bring, how the mechanics of the boss work, and also some mistakes that people make when taking on this boss. All right, let's get to it. Make sure to go and activate the quest line before jumping into the new Naraka boss. You have to beat White Castle a couple of times, then you complete the quest, accept the other quest, talk to the person, and finally accept the quest that tells you to beat Naraka for the first time. I'm going to go over a bunch of monsters, both free to play and some Nat 5 alternatives. Let's start with the lobby screen. If you're leading the party, you are going to be looking for a couple of things from your teammates. Two to three healers, which are required. One defense down and brand unit like Helia or Crow. Two to three sustain units. Bastet is really great here. Three damage dealers. We will talk more about these later. And of course, your summoner. Orbia brings defense break and damage. Kina brings healing. And Cleef just sort of exists. Let's start with the healers. I prefer two at least for safer runs. Your best options are Shushu and Lulu. Konamiya doesn't work as well here, but it can be used. For five stars, I would use Annabelle, Wusa, or even Ariel. These are much better options if you have them built, and only if you have them built. Personally, I run Annabelle. I like her because she heals very well, cleanses, helps with the minion phase later on with her defense break. She basically does everything that you need in this raid. Having at least one Helia or Crow on your team of three is kind of essential to make sure that you pass the DPS check of the Dragon's Roar phase. They both bring defense break in brands, so they are great options. For that extra sustain, think about bringing your newly acquired Bastet. If you don't have a Bastet, think about providing that defense break in brand from a Helia or even another DPS to help out. As far as damage goes, you have some options. The best early game unit is probably Karambit. Cassie is also a great option because they both do damage through the Dragon Scale, which is a DPS check phase. As you can see here, the Dragon Scale reduces damage by 99%, making it very hard for early and mid game players to burst down this DPS stage. Units like Karambit and Cassie are great free units that ignore this entire passive and do damage directly to the boss, breaking the Dragon's Breath phase rather quickly. Oh, and by the way, for players outside of North America, your next battle pass is Lupinus, and she does the exact same thing. She is a great unit for this boss and also really good in PvP. The last thing you want to think about bringing, or at least have ruined up in your monster box, it's not required, but during the minion phase, it might be nice to have an extra unit that does some sort of CC, and I will explain why later. A popular unit is Tractor, as they are easy to build and put out a lot of provokes, which do count towards that CC effect. Remember, in order to get the bonus, you only need to start the raid with the bonus, and you can always switch out to your real monsters when you get in. So if a random person joins your party and they don't have the right monsters, ask in the party chat if they plan on switching. They may have the monsters out to help them get the bonus and plan on switching to the better monsters for this raid. If you're having trouble hitting the bonus yourself, make sure to throw out your best monsters in the lobby and switch to your best weapon just to hit the bonus. When you enter the boss chamber, this is your chance to swap out your better monsters for the ones that you're going to use for the fight. When you enter the main area, Naraka will roar and fear everyone, pushing you backwards. You want to position yourself so you don't get pushed back into a red pool and get Dragon's Breath on you. After that, head straight for the boss. It's very important that you stay together with your group. You need to make sure that everyone is getting the effects of the healing monsters. Keep whacking away at the boss. If you have two healers, you can mostly spam your healing on cooldown, but if you're solo healing, it's important to be watching both your monsters and the animation on your teammates. You might not notice it, but there's a small flame animation that happens on your teammates. You can't actually see the purple debuff, but you can see that little flame animation covering their character. So make sure to be watching out for that and cleanse or heal when needed. If you were the solo healer, you need to be a little more cognizant of when you're using your abilities. Especially with a 4 mana cost on Lulu and Annabelle, you need to make sure that you have enough mana for certain attacks that the Naraka boss does, and especially for the Dragon's Roar phase, which will continually apply Dragon's Breath to your teammates. 
For this first damage phase, avoid all of the red bars and circles if you can, but Naraka doesn't do a lot of damage physically, but all of the real damage comes from the purple dragon's breath damage over time effect that will get applied to you. This effect cannot be cleansed by a Lulu or an Annabelle, but rather the monsters with the debuff have to be healed up to max HP, and then it will automatically be removed. Naraka will go and do a big circle attack, and it really doesn't do too much damage, so you can just tank it, but you might want to use a cleanse to get off that heal block. The next phase is the first damage check phase. If you are an Orbia, switch to Windstaff and help stack defense down debuff. Spam your Helia skill 2 to land defense break and brand. You need to do 3% of the boss's max HP to break this phase and move to the nuke phase. If you're the healer, especially a solo healer, don't just spam two heals in a row. I would heal once, wait a couple seconds, let some Dragon's Breath get applied to your teammates, then heal again. You want to make sure that you're not left with more Dragon's Breath on your team after the phase and you don't have any mana left. After you break it, you move into the nuke phase where you can just nuke down the boss. Switch to your damage dealers and use your ultimates if you have them. After this, the boss will fly up and you enter the minion phase. There are three pillars that you need to protect. Each summoner should pick a pillar and wait near the middle. Okay, so these minions will move towards your pillar and attack it. If two of the three pillars go down, then you lose. The minions start out with these purple shields that can't be stripped off, but will automatically be removed if you land any kind of CC on them. Orbia has her water staff, Cleave has his water weapon, and Kina also has some CC on her first skill on her water weapon. Most cases though, your summoner is not going to be able to put out enough CC to help out with this stage. So I would highly suggest bringing another CC monster like Tractor, as they're easy to build, they are a water element, and they provide a provoke which counts as a CC for this phase. Your Karambit, Lupinus, or Cassie will go right through this special shield. But if they are lower on the power side and unskilled, they might be a little too slow in killing them. This is why I like to use my defense break from Annabelle skill 3 to help out with the Karambit doing his thing. If you kill all the minions quickly, take a quick look, see your teammates, see if anyone needs any help. Once all of the minions are dead, just stand underneath the shield and wait for the boss to do his big area of effect attack. After that, head back to the middle. Make sure to be on top of your teammates and try to see if you can pick a spot where there isn't any of those flaming pools. You can see in this picture here, there's a lot of flaming pools on one side of the boss, but nothing on the other side. Choose that side. From here on out, it's going to be the same stuff from before. Stay together, avoid the big red boxes if you can. When the boss does the dragon's roar, heal off the dragon's breath damage over time. Or apply the debuffs depending on the monsters that you brought in. Naraka will do one more Dragon's Roar phase, which actually takes more damage in order to meet that damage check. So make sure that you're landing those defense breaks and brands, and if you're the healer, keep up those heals while the Dragon's Breath is getting applied. Just keep going like this and you will clear Naraka just fine. This is definitely easier with friends or guildies, so try to find a group to raid with as often as you can. The drops you get from here are very helpful in progressing your summoner's power level. I will have a full video in the future on what to look for with your summoner's gear and how to use the blacksmithing profession to turn bad gear drops into better ones. If you have any more questions, let me know down in the comments, or you can head down to the Discord. We've been answering tons of questions down there as well. As always, thank you for watching. I'm Topher Smurf telling you to keep on gaming.